from the CERN Earth and Space Center here. Today I'm going to be showing you how to do some backyard astronomy right from the comfort of your own home. To do that, we're going to be using a program called Stellarium, and there are a few different versions of this. There's a paid app version for your phones or tablets. There is a computer version that is free. You can download it and install it on your desktops or laptops. And there's also a free web-based version, which is what we're going to be using today. It's called Stellarium Web, and it runs right in your internet browser. I'll put the link to that down in the description, so feel free to follow along during this video. So once you've loaded up Stellarium Web, this should be the interface that you see. We have a nice starry night sky, landscape with some trees and some buildings. You can see the end there, that means we're facing towards the north, and a few controls and menus around. So let's go over some of these menus and controls that we have. If we look here on the left, we have some settings that we can change. We can turn on and off the Milky Way, the meridian line, or the ecliptic line. We have a view of what planets are visible tonight and what time they will be visible. A nice link to their mobile app that you can purchase and use on your phones. That's really great if you're out in the field trying to find certain objects. And then some other small things. We can get rid of this side panel though, so we can see more of the nighttime sky just by clicking these three little bars. And that'll give us a nice big view of our nighttime sky. We also have some controls down here at the bottom. You'll see where it says Triton College. That's our current location, and it should update automatically based on where you are. You could turn on auto location, but we're here at the Cernan Center at Triton College, so we'll leave it set for there. We also have a few controls down here at the bottom. We can turn on constellation lines and the names. So that way we kind of know what we're looking at. We can also turn on the artwork for those so we can see what those shapes are supposed to be. A lot of times the stick figures don't really look like what they're supposed to be. So having the artwork can really help us out there. We can also turn on and off the atmosphere and that can really help us if we're dealing with a lot of light pollution, having trouble finding things. We can turn on the atmosphere, get a better idea of what it looks like around city areas, how bright the sky is. And we can turn that off so we can find things like the Milky Way and some of those harder to find stars and objects that are out there. We can also turn on and off the landscape so we can see through the earth or not. I find that it's best to leave that turned on because this is more like what you'll see in the actual nighttime sky. We also have a few grids that we can turn on and off. There's one for the azimuth, and there's one for the equatorial coordinate system. So both of those are, especially if you have a telescope set up with a certain type of mount, those will help you line up and find out what you're looking for and where it's supposed to be. We can also turn on and off the markers for deep sky objects, things like galaxies and nebula. And if we turn those off, we'll see some of these blue circles start to fade away. If we turn it back on, they'll come back into view. There's also a night mode, which is very useful if you're using this on your phone or computer outside in a dark sky because it'll turn the whole screen red. It makes it a little bit harder to see, but it also doesn't hurt your eyes as much. So you're, if you're switching from looking at the real night sky to looking at your computer screen, having it turned red is going to make it a little bit easier on your eyes so you won't have to wait for your eyes to adjust again when you look back up towards the nighttime sky. There's also a full screen mode button, which I have it in right now. And way over here on the bottom right, we have our date and time settings. You can set that for pretty much any date and time you like. I have it set for 9.15 right now, which is the default. You can start time, so if you're out in the field and taking a look at the stars, you can keep time running at its normal pace and it'll keep track with you. So that way, it'll always be updated on what you're looking at. And then there are some other things we can see up here at the top. There's a search bar, so if you want to find a particular object, you can search for it. Say we wanted to find the Andromeda Nebula, we can click on that and it will turn us right towards it and give us some information about that as well. There's also over here an Observe button. You can click on that. If you have an account with this company, Noctua Sky, you can log your observations and it keeps track of everything you see. But the really cool part about this is there's a calendar here which will give you a list of certain things to look for on certain dates in the nighttime sky. Other than that, that's about it as far as the controls go. It's pretty self-explanatory. You just click and drag to find what you're looking for. 
can turn on those constellations. You can zoom in and out. So if you wanted to find something in particular, get a closer look at it, say we wanted to look at Jupiter. We can focus right on there and zoom in, and it'll show us what it will look like through a telescope. We can start to see some of its moons coming in. We'll get a better view of its atmosphere and get some really cool views. And all this is done right through your browser. So like I said at the top of the video, Stellarium does have a full version of this software on their website. It is much more intuitive, has a lot more data and abilities included in that. So definitely check that out if you have the time. But I find that the Stellarium web-based version is good enough for finding those hard to see objects, identifying shapes, stars, planets, and things like that. I hope you enjoyed the video and hope to see you again soon. Thanks.